All right, there, we're rolling, so watch the language so I don't have to cut it out later. <laughs> I don't have an adult YouTube channel, so keep the language. All right, so one thing we have to do, that engine is made out of all kinds of dissimilar metals. So they're all going to expand at a different rate. So before you put on a whole bunch of power, you want everything to be fully expanded or you're doing long-term damage. And, you know, it would probably outlive me, <laughs> or at least my flying career, but you know, you want to treat an expensive engine as if it's an expensive engine. So we're waiting on 120 degrees before we go out of this green arc. Once this goes to 100, I think it's 121 degrees, that green arc will go all the way out to the red line and then we'll be able to taxi and take. We can actually taxi with it like this, but we couldn't take off that way. Okay. Um, cylinder heads are still down in the yellow. Those will come up quickly and we don't really have to wait for them. Um, this, is, uh, this is our fuel, 15 plus gallons. This is our tack, so that's our RPM. Fuel flow, which is really only an approximation. Fuel pressure, which as long as it doesn't go bug nuts, we don't much care. Oil pressure is right in the green. Oil temp on a hot day will get right up into that yellow today, probably just to the bottom of it. We really wanted to get up into the top of the green and bottom of the yellow to burn the moisture out of it because uh, it had been flown for a while. This tells me that the spar pins are in, holding the wings in, um, or you could just turn around and look at them, or you could just notice that there are wings on the airplane. <laughs> Uh, this is our trim. I, I showed you that trim back, turn track back there. That green line is takeoff, so it is set to a lot of up trim right now. The way it gets done in this airplane, it's electric. In a Cessna, there would be a handle. We're going to push that back right around there. There we go. It goes really, really fast because of the autopilot. Um, the autopilot will use the trim, and it wants to do it quickly. You know, and sometimes it, it's not even fast enough. It'll say, give me some trim, give me some up trim, give me some down trim. Um, we're going to go ahead and just put in a GPS destination. We'll use a direct two because direct two is the only thing most people know how to use. We're going to come right back to Bolton. So there's my direct two. That gives us our guidance in thingy here. And that'll, that will, that purple line, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, that's how we navigate. There's also, there'll be a green line once we start moving away to get us back to here. So here we are at Bolton. Um, in relation to Port Columbus, there's Port Columbus over there. So you can tell already that that's not facing north. It's facing down towards the end of the runway. And here's, you can start to see controlled airspace. This is a controlled airspace around Columbus. Um, it will tell me, uh, that's a TFR over Ohio Stadium because you know we got a game, game, today. game tonight. Yeah, yeah 7.30, when you're in the top five, you get to watch your games on Saturday night. <laughs> so lots and lots and lots of information in here. This can be overwhelming. This is the EFIS style of presentation as opposed to the old mechanical six pack. What I'm going to do for you, uh, because I'm friendly, and as soon as I figure out how, I'm gonna go to screen, and I'm gonna go to, no, that's not right. Go to, uh, bah, bah, bah. I don't do this enough, PFD, um, mode, uh, six pack. That's more like what you're gonna see in an older airplane. Um, I can make that bigger. Uh, I can hide the map and make that bigger. I can hide this, but I don't like hiding the engine stuff and make it bigger so it's all spread out. Um, when, I, when we're flying along, and we really don't care where we're going, actually, which is right now, we really don't care where we're going, I can just go ahead and turn that off. Uh, I can turn off the map screen and then you'll be able to follow that a lot better. Uh, so going through the six pack here, this is your attitude, um, not whether you're in a good mood or a bad mood, this attitude of the airplane. So you can see we actually have a little bit of slope here. It's very, very sensitive. This will be our navigation stuff. This will work as a compass. So we're headed actually down, we're headed 220 degrees, which is parallel to runway 22. That's how runways are numbered. If I don't know if you remember that or even do it. Vertical speed, how many hundred feet per minute up or down you're going. Uh, we'll climb out at probably a thousand feet per minute, which is a whole lot. Um, <laughs> this is our altitude, and we talked about this the other day. This is our altitude MSL, so we're 900, well actually probably not 960. They're going to give us a barometer setting here. Um, I'll get the barometer setting. I, know, I, want, I want to see how accurate mine. Well, this isn't set yet. I don't have oh. the altimeter setting yet. Okay. Mine says 928. Right. So look, um, I'm going to set that right here. This, this is going to be the atmospheric pressure. It's probably wrong. It's probably going to be more like 30.04. And that's uh, under the barometer switch because your altimeter is a barometer. This is a turn coordinator, which we're not going to really need right now. Um, but this will show you if you're misbehaving with the rudder. Um, you always step on the ball, and that, that ball should be in the middle. So if I'm making a turn to the right, and I'm not really giving enough rudder, that ball's going to fall down to the right. I need to step on the rudder to push it back up. So the ball tells you which way to go. Yeah, well, it tells you which way the rudder, yes, right. to, get it, to get it coordinated. And the steeper you turn, the more you need. And the, the longer the airplane, the more torque, whatever, whatever. So those are the six things we're interested in. The engine stuff is all pretty good. We're not going to worry about that right now. I'll tell you what to do or when you fly over here. Well, I'll just let you do the throttle. But for now, it's not a big deal. We're just going to be flying around. Uh, we have two frequencies here. 
Uh, there's one guy in the tower, but he does both jobs. So he's the ground controller and the air traffic controller, the runway controller. They have separate frequencies, and even though it's the one guy doing it, you have to use the separate frequencies. That's policy or law, I don't know. You just have to do it. You can confirm that you have the right thing in because I made a mistake last year. I was transmitted on the wrong frequency, and I should have, it was right in front of me, and I, I didn't even look. <laughs> KTZR is Bolton Field, and 121.8 is the ground frequency at KTZR. Sure. And it's right there. Yeah, they're going to match. Uh, KTZR tower is 128.1. This is the active frequency because I'm going to talk to ground first. Tower comes next. When I'm ready to talk to tower, you just swap them over. Monitor ground no, he's just, he just, somebody just landed and was told to monitor ground 0.8, so he is busily doing this. He's dialing up 121.8. Almost everybody would have had that already staged. Almost every airplane radio has this storage capability now. Uh, if not, you have to dial real quick. But those are very easy to remember, and the thing will tell you. And if you forget them, that information is all in here. The whole entire database, I could find out the frequencies for any airplane in the country, or any airport in the country, in the database that's installed here. So. This electronic stuff, it brings you a lot of stuff. It brings you reliability because you're not dependent on a vacuum pump and spinning gyros. It's cheaper, it's lighter, and it's got just, it can tell you everything you ever need to know. And what it doesn't know, uh, there's an app you can get called ForeFlight that'll tell you even more. So you can actually get information overload if you're not careful. All right, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna call the tower, tell him we're at the T-hangers, ready to take off, or ready to taxi, and he's gonna clear us down to probably runway 22. I'm not really sure the wind is, but we can look that up. Uh, well, we could have if I had turned up the map screen. That's where the info is. Uh, but they're going to tell us that as soon as we contact me. He's going to give me an altimeter setting. I'm going to dial that in, and he's going to tell us where to go. So, um, oil, we're ready to go. So, we could, typically, I will taxi before the oil's warmed up, because if we're, if we're going down the runway four, it's a long hike. So, I, I might as well just be taxiing while I'm doing that. Uh, we don't normally just sit here like this. Well, not, not much is going to be normal. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to key the mic. Now, will you talk to... Pretty much anybody is the first thing I'm going to say is who I think I'm talking to. If I were to say Port Columbus Tower, he's going to say, you're on the wrong frequency. Right away, we don't even need to talk anymore. We're done here. So I'm going to, who I'm talking to or who I think I'm talking to, who I am, which is going to be experimental. They have to be told that once. Experimental 284 Delta Golf. Where we are, we're at the T-hangers, and what we want. Well, we're ready to taxi. And I'm not going to tell him I want a taxi to runway 4 or taxi 22. He's going to tell me which runway to go to. I can ask for a different one. Um, like runway 4 is the calm air runway, but it's a mile down the road. And if it's calm air, it doesn't matter. He'll clear me to taxi to runway 4. I'll tell him I'd rather go to 22. And as long as he doesn't have traffic coming in or going out, he'll let me do that. He doesn't care. And 22, you would like that better because? It's less taxi. If the wind okay. isn't a factor, why taxi a mile? Okay. Now, if the wind is a factor, which it is today, it's, it's getting pretty gusty, we want to go as much into the wind as possible because the wing, the wing flies by how much air is coming across it, not how fast the wheels are going over the ground. So if you have a 100-knot headwind, all you need is enough engine to hold your... You know, you still need an engine, otherwise you blow backwards. <laughs> you just take off like a helicopter. So it's, it's better for the tires, it's better for the brakes, it's just better all around to not keep the airplane on the ground any longer. It needs to be same with landing. Uh, you want it as you know, slow as reasonable. So I, th I suspect he's going to he's going to tax uh, he's going to tell us to tax it runway two two via taxiway alpha and I'll show you how to read the signs. He's going to say alpha bravo to two two, unless I'm completely wrong on the wind. Um, we'll find out. So I'm going to it's going to be Bolton Tower. Oh, so I'm sorry, Bolton Ground. Experimental two eighty four Delta Golf at the t at the T hangers ready to taxi depart. And I'm going to tell him we're going to depart via our westbound. Reason he cares is we're right up against that Columbus airspace. So if I say I'm departing to the north east, that's going to put me right in the airspace almost right away. He wants to know that. Uh, he may pre-coordinate for us because I'm going to have to call them pretty quickly. We're right on the edge. So I tell him the, the direction we want to go so that he, he either worries about it or doesn't. And he may have somebody, you know, I may say I want a right turn out. Well, he's got somebody on left downwind. He doesn't want me turning right into that guy. So he may tell me to extend or wait or whatever. So there's just four pieces of information they need. It's pretty straightforward. It is the hardest thing to learn. And it's one of the first things that gets rusty. You know, if I go a month or two across the winter without flying and I try to talk, I can't get the words out. And it doesn't matter because he can't either because he hasn't worked very hard all winter either. So it's the very first thing to erode. So it's, it's really what sticks a lot of people. Um, it's why I say 
if you train at an uncontrolled field, I guess we're going to use runway four, um, you still want to get experience with control towers. Clear, we don't do clearance delivery here, but you would up at Don Scott, things like that. So you want to get that experience so you don't come bumbling into one of these places trying to go to the barbecue place and you don't know what you're doing because that happens. <laughs> it happens a lot. So he'll tell you about the wind and all yeah, that Yeah, he's going to say, uh, when we get down to, ra- he may say it here and he'll say it again at the end of runway, winds, um, what, zero five zero at 10, gusting, whatever, whatever. I don't really know what it is. We could look it up, except I closed the map window and we don't really need it because he's going to tell us anyway. Bolt round, experimental 284 Delta Golf at the T-Hangers, ready to taxi to party VFR westbound. 284 Delta Golf, Bolt and Ground, runway 4, taxi via Bravo and Alpha, wind is 12006, south terminal 3007. And taxi off to the Bravo to runway 4, for Delta Golf. So we had 12006, so I was off by that, that goes right there. Uh, we say 10 knots down the runway, 16 knots, 18 knots, 20 knots, something like that. It's right down the runway, basically. What you really don't want in an airplane this light is a 20 knot crosswind. <laughs> you can do it, but it's it's uh, it's work. It's such a light plane, it blows around. That will happen even as I'm taxiing past the hangars because it'll kind of wind tunnel through there, and it'll hit that big old tail, and it'll kick me, and the plane wants to go, you know, so you have to, you're always on kind of on goal here. Now, I'm steering with the brakes right now. If you reach out, Put your feet on the rudder pedals, toes up near the top, and just push against the top of the right side one with the top of your foot. There you go. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. There you go. Let go. See how that made us turn? Yep. So what I do is I kind of, I'm stabbing, stabbing. Now I want it to go left. Stab, 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 because I don't want to lose all my momentum. It, it's, not, it's not that we can't get it back again, but as a matter of technique, you try to keep your momentum, and you try not to drag the brakes. As it is, I change the brake pads probably once every year and a half, uh, which is a lot. Um, most airplanes that have a steerable nose wheel don't have this problem. The RV-10, which is also a swiveling nose wheel, still doesn't eat up the brakes as fast because it's so much more steady. It's not as responsive to every little gust and blow. Okay, so the, the yellow B on the black background means we're on taxiway Bravo. The black okay. A on the yellow means we're going to be running into Alpha. If we want to go to runway four, it's that way. Okay, how do you know that? Uh, that's part of your ground training. Okay. That, that'd okay. be in your, that'll be on your written test. It'll be in your ground training. It's standard to every airport in the country. Um, and you follow the yellow line to the best of your ability. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff that the, you know, the sporties thing or whatever is going to be very good at teaching you that. That guy is probably going to get cleared to take off over us. Or behind us. I can't tell which. I'm not on tower, so I can't hear what he's being told. Oh, he's turning around. Okay. They're waving. Hi. <laughs> he's not waving. He's doing, he's saying back up or something. We got a banner tow. He's probably yep. coming in to dump that banner uh, because if he was taking it to the game, it would be up north. Uh, here's where he's going to pick it up. That's what these flags are on our left. And so he's going to have to be out. He's going to he's going to come swooping down. He's going to drop the banner. He's going to come around again. They may set out another one. He'll come down really low, grab it, and just swoop like at about a 45 degree angle to pick it up. It's actually quite interesting to watch. This is a guy coming in on right base. Um, the, the tower is the only one that can tell you to do that. When the tower closes, it's automatically left traffic unless the runway is stipulated as always right traffic, which is exceedingly rare, uh, usually done for noise control or obstructions. So he must have been coming in from the east. He's got a tower, so the hours, well, you, why make you do that? I can, I'm controlling the runway, make a right turn in. So it's something that happens here. Uh, people that come out from the west, they get used to, if we're ran, landing on 2-2, which is almost always the case, they're used to being told to fly right traffic to land. The tower closes at 7.30, they come in at 8 o'clock, and they still fly right traffic. Well, they need to be on the other side where everybody else is. It's not even an exotic rule. It's one that everybody should know, but I, I, for some reason they get in the habit. And I caught myself doing it many, many years ago. I caught myself doing the exact same thing. I said, wait a minute, it's after 7.30, I can't do it. <laughs> so, not ever, I, I don't know how to say this politely. Not everybody has, well, I'm sure I have my blind, I, I, here's a better way to say it. Everybody has blind spots. Um, there's things that they get in habit of doing. Rules have either changed or they've forgotten them. But you, you just got to watch out for the other guy because you cannot implicitly, you, you know this from your motorcycle. You're not going to park in the blind spot of a truck no. because you don't know that driver. <laughs> Here comes another helicopter. Oh, that's the guy departing, man. They got out in a hurry. They're out there now. That's one of those life flight choppers. You watch it. You have to watch yourself down through here. A lot of wildlife through here. Not as much since they put the fence around it. But I have seen coyotes come running across in front of me. I've seen deer on the runway. I've seen ha- uh, vultures uh, sitting there eating something that they don't want to leave. When they do leave, that's a big bird that you don't want to hit. So you really, it's kind of tempting to just ride along here, but you really got to kind of watch for the wildlife along here. 
I don't want to hit anything. <laughs> you, you don't want to hit it, even a dove. You don't want to hit anything. I saw where they're using drones out at uh, OSU. There we go. I, I heard they saw where they're using drones out at OSU to keep the birds off the runway. Yeah, it's a thing. Uh, we had geese. We had a geese infestation one year. And geese, they would pick them up and move them. Get killed deer. Airport is the only place I ever see killed deer. Uh, they had a goose that was nesting up on one of the taxiways, and of course, you hit that with your propeller, and it's a mandatory engine tear down on an older engine. This one, the clutch protects you. Uh, so they picked it up and moved her, and she came right back. So they had to, I think they got a little harsher on the next move. Um, and I see a lot of fox. I see a lot of fox in here. So a lot of stuff coming out of those cornfields. Well, that's inside the fence, so <laughs> there's, stuff, there's stuff hiding in there. Okay, so end of runway. This is where we do some last minute checks. The one thing we make sure we do, I check this about a dozen times every time I fly, is make sure that canopy is latched. Uh, a lot of people, when they forget to latch that canopy, they get about halfway down the runway or even up into the air and it lifts up and it makes a horrible racket and everything's blowing around and they're fiddling around trying to close that damn canopy and end up crashing the airplane. So if the canopy ever pops open, just let it be. Turn around, come back, and land and fix it. Don't try to fix it in the air, because you can't. You literally can't. It's a wing. It's got air coming across it. Bernoulli is lifting that more. Bernoulli can lift a hell of a lot more than you or I can lift. So just let it be. But I get, I've become kind of paranoid about it. I check it a couple, three times, because why not? So we have a checklist. Um, I'm not going to use it right now. I have one built into here, and I also have a paper one somewhere. But this is a pretty straightforward airplane. Um, so what we're going to do, basically, I want to make sure controls are free and correct. So I want to see that aileron up when I go left. I want to see that one go up when I go right. I want to see the elevator go up. You should be able to see, well, it is hard to see the elevator, but you're just basically making sure. Now, I do this every time. It never once failed. And ailerons have always gone the right direction. The one that's probably the biggest risk, well, the biggest risk is, is a trim tab. Biggest risk is that the trim tab is done backwards because most pilots, not most, many pilots, don't know which way it's supposed to work and they don't think it through. They think it should work the same as the elevator, but it works the opposite. It's lifting the elevator up. So um, that's probably the biggest thing. The second one is the stabilator here is controlled by cables. And if I've had that off or somebody else had it off, there is the potential that those cables got crossed. It would be really hard to do, but if you really wanted to work at being an idiot, you could do it. So you just take a look back there, make sure that tail's going up and down. Rudder's going right and left. It's also cables and everything moves freely. Now the big thing after that is let's test the engine. So we're going to take the engine up to 4,000 RPM or thereabouts. There are two magnetos in here. There's So every cylinder has two spark plugs. One will be driven off of one magneto, one will be driven off the other. So what we're going to do is rev it up to 4,000. We're going to turn off a magneto. That will turn off four spark plugs. So we should see an RPM drop. If the magneto is bad, if, if there's really something really, really wrong with it, the other one that's remaining, it's going to drop a lot more than that. So there are tolerances. These are actually quite high. You're allowed to go down to like 300 RPM. Um, you expect to go about down 180, and they should both agree within 50 RPM or something like that. They always do, but you, someday they won't. This is the reason you do this. This airplane would fly on one magneto, but you've given up your redundancy. There's absolutely no reason to ever do that. I don't know if anybody ever does. That would be silly to do. RPM is right here. So this, you can do this two ways. You can twist it in, but if you're really going up high enough, you can just push it in and then just fine tune it with the vernier here. And again, it doesn't have to be 4,000 exactly. Um, it's actually hard to get it to settle on any given RPM. I say that's, I overshot that a little bit. So I'm going to turn off the left. Now we dropped 190, 170, somewhere around there. It's going to come back up. And then we should see the same thing with this one. Now, if nothing happens, your ground is broken, and that's bad news because you really want to be able to turn off those magnetos. And then we're going to bring it down, make sure it'll idle. Now, I've got a very low set idle, so it's going to feel kind of rough down there. That's actually not too bad. Both magnetos are back on. Yeah, they're both on. And then we're going to kind of take a look around. I want to go to tower so I don't ask for takeoff clearance on ground. He would just correct me. He would be mad about it. He wouldn't get kicked off the airport or anything like that. Um, I'm making sure my trim is correct. Temperatures are all good. I'm making voltage. I'm only calling, I'm only pulling one amp, uh, which means the regulators work and the battery's nicely charged. Otherwise, it'd be do like negative six or something like that. Um, and that's of course important. Uh, volts will come up with a little bit of RPM, so they're not. It's not going to run super well at idle. Uh, we're looking at the trim, which I think I mentioned. Temps are all in the green. Amps are doing good. Volts are good. Fuel fresh is good. Fuel flow you wouldn't expect much. You know, we're sitting here idling. Uh, oil temp fluctuating a little bit. It always does. Uh, oil, oh, I'm sorry, oil pressure, oil temp is solid. We're, we're good. Um, 
I want to make sure I have a course plugged in. I, I think I did. I have a KTZR plugged in. It'll tell me right there, KTZR. So we got a course. We'll be able to find our way back, which we ought to be able to do anyway since we've been flying out of here for 20-some years. I think we're ready to go. Um, so what we'll do, we'll scooch you on up here a little bit because he's going to clear us to take off. Uh, that guy's going to come around the pattern again, but it'll be a while. And once we get up here, I'm going to tell him, bolt power, and then the whole who I think I'm talking to, who I am, what I want to do. And I'm going to tell him the same thing I told him before, be pretending it's a completely different guy and he's never heard of us. It's a little fiction that we play. Bolt well, power, experimental 284 Delta Golf, ready for takeoff, runway forward, departing VFR westbound. Experimental 284 Delta Golf, Bolton Tower, turn left on course, runway 4, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, runway 4, left on course, 4 Delta Golf. And I try to slow myself down. <laughs> I got to where I was talking so fast. Tower, Banner, 315, they couldn't understand me. That's a Banner Tow. Bolton Terror, Roger transition to the Bolton class Delta approved. Altimeter 3007. All right, so here's where I've got the stick all the way back. Experimental, okay. he's going to be left turn westbound. I'm going to let it run forward a little bit. And here comes the throttle. And I'm on the right brake already. I'm starting to feel pressure on the stick. The nose is going to come up. I'm going to start easing down to where I'm using the rudder. So I'm going to ease off the stick to hold this angle. I'm holding the right rudder, I'm holding the stick, and it's just going to fly off by itself. And you can feel that crosswind kick in. Yeah. That's, when the, that's when the tires came up. I could have had the stick, the stick a little bit with a right aileron so it would drop right into that. I did. That was bad technique. Um, didn't really hurt anything, but technique is to have that wing down so that you don't get that jump. But until you know how hard the wind's going. Open golf traffic. Two miles west of the field, west-northwest, is a banner tow, northeast bound. He's about in your 9 o'clock now. Yeah, four Delta Golf, clearly in sight. We're in Fort Delta Golf, Roger. Yeah, the banner helps. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find the airplane, but the banner's a dead giveaway. So we'll end up behind him. But he was telling me, as I got traffic off to the west, he knew I was departing to the west. He didn't want me to fly into him. So he was calling that out as traffic, and I just told him, I see it. Uh, if I, just, I could have said not in sight, you know, you know, just keep looking. But once he knows I see him, he doesn't have to talk to me about it anymore. He knows I see him. A little bouncier today. <laughs> uh, this is not too bad. There is some bumps. It could get a lot worse. But typically when the clouds are flat like this, you're not going to get a whole lot of that. Downwind for uh, uh, midfield for left downwind to runway four. November 63 Fox, our Roger and approach S the Squawk VFR 1200, please. No, we're not. She are. 63 Fox, our Squawking VFR 1200. Don't know where she is. Let's get the map back on here uh, because that's where my. Open tower, good afternoon, Connie. For traffic information is. Yankee banner toes off Sumba Southwest. Okay, there's us. That's the banner tow. That might have been the woman that was just talking. Four Yankee Bolton Terror transition to the Bolton class Delta approved out to meter three zero zero seven. And we're at twenty one hundred. I'm going to take us up to three, where it'll probably it might smooth out a little. What we're feeling right now is turbulence from the wind, not so much the thermal. Uh, Fort Delta Gulf, we are uh, about three miles to west. Terminal 4 Delta Golf Roger, there's another banner tow lifting off uh, Columbus Southwest. Frequency change, prove your discretion. Have a good day. Uh, thanks for the info. Good day to you too. I'm going to leave the frequency on because I don't care. Right, 2, 3, 5, frequency change, approved. Now, Columbus Southwest is a grass airport, and it's hard to find because it's a grass airport. But it is right out here somewhere. He's got another banner tow coming out of there. Uh, we're pretty past it by now because it's really only two and a half miles from Bolt. But the banner toes, they, they're easy to see. I like the banner toes. Frequency change approved. I never really ask for it. Uh, some people do. It's just saying, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Yeah, that's fine. We're done. We're done here. We'll stay at 2500. We'll go look at the round barn. Um, this is a park. And I think that's where they keep the bison in the summer. But this all used to be part of Darby Dan Farm. Yes. And they have their own airstrip. Yes. And they have that training barn. And those are somewhat unique. That's an in it, Oh, he's not talking to me because uh, he thinks I'm not with him anymore. That's an indoor uh, training barn. They could just tr uh, trot around in there and the weather's bad. And they're, they're exceedingly rare, but there's two of them in Grove City. There's this one and another one a little bit east of here. Huh. And then uh, that stuff is all around where uh, 29 hits West Jefferson. All those new warehouses. I think West Jefferson is trying to be the distribution center capital of central Ohio. 
Uh, they built up an Amazon center and they got a huge one being built right across the street. And they've got to be giving them really good tax abatements. All right, this is good. So, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to slow us down a little bit so it's not quite as bumpy. I'm going to turn my air down a little bit. I'm getting chilly. You can pull that closed if you need to. That's okay. And I want you to put your, well, I'm going to handle the throttle so that you can start flying with your left hand, which is what you're going to do over here. Because everything, if you're right-handed, everything you want to do with your right hand is over here. So it's a very, very light grip. I mean, just barely grip on it. You got it? Got it. Okay. So you can see how easy it is to make it do what you want it to do. I'm going to trim us down a little bit so we don't keep climbing. And you just need to fly us along. Trying to keep it level, right? Yeah, and you can tell, until you develop a sight picture, which you will, you'll determine what the nose looks like when you're level. You'll use this. So right now, we're 500 foot per minute descent. So just a very gentle, which actually what you should do is just hit, if, it, if you're putting any force against it, hit the trim. So if you're having to hold it up, hit trim up, and it'll keep you from having to do that. But just jab at it, because it's very fast. Now, if we wanted to turn, I would suggest, uh, if we wanted to turn, we would go to the right, and that would be a very gentle movement to the right. And now it's going to want to drop the nose again, because you're taking some of the lift off, so you're going to very gently pull back. Don't grip it so hard. Very, very light grip. I mean, like you're barely touching it. Okay? Let me give you a little trim. There we go. That's good. You're holding it right there. So that's how you turn. And it takes very little. Um, in a Cessna, you're going to have to pull a lot more. Uh, this airplane will just, just wants to climb. That's all it wants to do. Reason to terror, raison de terror, however you say it in the French. So now if we want to go back to the left, you would do the same kind of thing. And you're really not going to have to work the rudders at all right now. Yeah. Just, just use it with the stick. And really, uh, the, the goal here is keep us off the ground and on the continent. You know, I mean, we're just going to fly. Don't take us back that way because we're running to Port Columbus. But just fly around and get a feel for it, and I'm just going to be here in case it gets away from you. It is very <laughs> sensitive. It is extremely sensitive. And you, you grew, well, I grew to like that. I, I like an airplane that responds to my every whim. I try to find that in a woman, but they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a little thermal activity, not too much. Now is our altitude staying the same manner? No, we're climbing up. We're climbing at 500 right now. You can almost feel it slowing down, right? Yeah. The, the propeller is going to sound different. It's going to feel a little heavier. Three Foxtrot runway. And you will develop a feeling for that. Here's traffic. Now this is five miles away, so he's about six miles away, 700 feet above us. The black inside there means the computer doesn't think he's a threat. Actually, he just disappeared. Okay, now which road is this over here? Is this 71? Uh, 71. Yeah, the, well, 71 is right down there if you're meeting a high traffic one. And then this would be uh, 40 over here, National Highway. Okay. And that, you see that interchange there where um, yeah. that's uh, 42 hitting uh, 40? Okay. You see the three hangers down there a little bit? Yeah. That's, look a little further than that, you see a runway? Yes, I do. That's Madison County. Okay. So that is Kilo Uniform Yan Yankee Fox Dog, K-U-I-F, which I call Ugly Young Farmers because that's a long time ago. I couldn't remember it. Somebody said, well, just call it Ugly Young Farmers. You'll never forget it. <laughs> and they were right. <laughs> it's kind of a thing. Oh, he's back again. So he's, see, that black means he's not an issue to us, but it's there just so we know. Okay. Now he's 700 feet above and four and a half miles, which makes him hard to see. Five miles is a long way off to be able to see a tiny little airplane. A lot of people can do it. I can't. There he is. Oh, I see him. He's, it's kind of easy today because he's just black against blue. He's a tiny, tiny little speck, inch and a half over the horizon. Okay. See, we didn't used to know this stuff. Years ago, I would have never known he was there. Hmm. This is really good stuff. You want to see some weather? There's some weather. That'll get here in the next day or two. Wow. Amazing stuff. So let's not get too close to Madison County. Let's, um, since we're already north of it, let's just go further north. Okay. We're up above it all, but there's a plane right there. He didn't show up on the traffic. That might be him right there. 
No, he's too close. Right there. Yep. Traffic. There we go. She finally saw it. There he is. And that, so the yellow means you care about this one. Okay. A lot of times that's highway patrol just orbiting around trying to write speeding tickets from the air, which is not a very efficient way to do it. <laughs> but it does catch the attentive drivers because they're looking for stuff in the median. Yeah, we'll just head north. Um, compass is right here. Now, the way this purple line works, I can, I'm going to reset back to bolt. So I'm just going to go uh, map, direct to, direct to bolt. And that'll reset that. Now, it gave us enough room to turn around. So let's look at this real quick. Um, let's get rid of the map. You see how that bar is broken? Yes. Once that bar moves back to the middle of that line and that becomes a continuous, continuous line, yes. that means we're on course, but we're not heading towards it. So if we wanted to go back to Bolton, my airplane, if I wanted to go back to Bolton, what I would do is I'd get on an intercept angle to that, but not 90 degrees because that would be a wicked turn once we got to it. I'll take an angle on it like this, maybe 30 degrees. I'll wait for that bar to come back to the center. Almost, almost. And then I would roll out on heading. And this one, I believe, is the one that's corrected for wind. It, so this is your ground track, I think. There's one that does and one that doesn't when we're on the full screen. But I think this one corrects for the wind. So I would just, if I got that thing straight up and down in there and straight up and down on the screen, it's going to take us right back to bolt. Looking straight out ahead of us, you see that tower that looks like a big golf tee? Yes. That is your, that's a landmark for Bolton Field. We are, it's on the far side of Bolton Field. The runway is right before that. So if you can see that, you can find Bolton. I still see other traffic too. <laughs> so let's see, let's get some gas back. This grip too slow. And let's, I'll bring you back to north. <laughs> so that's how that works. That traffic is now our altitude. Same zero zero means he's same altitude as us. And that's him. No, it's not. Uh, that's that's that. He's more than ten to the south. Uh, All right, your airplane. And we can head back to the west if you want. Six five three X-ray Bolton Terror maintain VFR pursuit the practice house approach runway four report a three mile final wind one six zero four gust one five altimeter three zero zero seven. Three zero zero seven. I'll let you know three miles out. Five three X-ray. Get gusty. Let's go ahead and climb it to 3,000. So I want you to do that. I don't want you to hold back pressure. I want you to hold back pressure until it starts to climb and then take it off at the trim switch. Tower, and change hands if you need to because you are on the wrong side. For runway four. But I want you to understand the trim. So I pull back. If you're, if you're holding back pressure, watch what, when I, are you holding back pressure? Yes. You should start to feel that come off. Let, don't, let go of it. Don't let it, don't hold that back pressure because the trim is taking over. Okay. So now let's say we wanted to go down, you'd have to push down. Well, you're, I don't really like pushing down, I just use trim to go down. Okay. So let's see what happens. Just let go of it and let's see what it does. Other than roll. So it's pretty close to trimmed out. Okay. So if I wanted to go up, if I wanted to climb, I would just go ahead and tap the trim. And let's see what it does. I just gave it that one Instead little tap. Instead of pulling on the stick. Instead of pulling trim. on the stick. See, I, I, now it gave me a lot. They gave me a whole lot for one little tap, and that's because of the autopilot. So I push that back in, it should come back down. So the idea is, the faster the wing goes, the more it wants to climb. But you don't want to fly along on a long cost front to be forcing the stick forward, because if you have to let go for some reason, up it goes. So you want to trim it to neutral whenever you change anything. Now, on a lot of thermals, when you're going up and down, you're not going to be able to keep up with it. You're just going to have to hand fly that or let the autopilot do it. And there is, I don't have roll trim, so if it rolls off on the side, you have to do that yourself. Now the autopilot takes care of all of that. <laughs> the autopilot's very sophisticated. So if we wanted back to Bolton, you could still see that course there. If you wanted to go back to Bolton, let's turn around and get on that course. Okay, we're going to turn left. Yep. Okay. Get a little more throttle. Does it start dropping any time you turn? Yeah, a little. Because you know you have a lift vector, and as you, it's a, this is trigonometry. Too bad you didn't teach that. <laughs> I'll yeah. never stop that. As you go off, 
the lift is going this way, so now you have a vertical component and a horizontal component. That's what makes us turn. Well, because your lift component is less than it used to be, you're not going to climb as much or you're going to start to descend. This is high enough. Let's let's steep it to 3,500. So let's let let's get it back. Let, let off any back pressure you have. There you go. There we go. And just continue on around this turn. And we'll just line up with that purple line, and that'll take us back. How are you feeling? Are you okay? I'm fine. All right. Now, I've also read that you should not have polarized glasses or sunglasses when you're flying. I don't know why not. They said it's harder to see the instruments. Not these. Okay. I don't have any trouble. Uh, these are well. These are transitions. They're not polarized. Okay. Sunglasses. Yeah. Now, sunglasses. I have flown polarized sunglasses, and I have no trouble with the glass. My camera won't work unless I turn it 90 degrees because it was a stupid design. <laughs> but I've never had any trouble with sunglasses with this stuff, and or that. So maybe that would be a maybe. It'll depend on the airplane, yeah, perhaps. So that's the direction we want to go, right? Well, we want to follow this purple line. Oh, that's okay. going to take us directly to it. Um, another way to do it. This one is ground. This one is wind corrected. So you can just follow that one. And we'll give them a call. I'm going to go ahead and head back. Um, this is your first time. You know, <laughs> give me some time to think about this. Um, about five or six miles out, I'll give him a call. And we want to be over something identifiable. Um, let's just fly towards this arrow here where that says Lily. It's right under there. That yeah. See that silver flag? Yes. That silver flag means I put that there. It's not an official waypoint. It's the green elevator at Lily Chapel. The tower knows where that is. We've agreed upon, if I'm over Lily Chapel or West Jefferson or Darby Dan, I will tell you that. I won't, I, or if nothing, I will say I'm eight miles north. It's like an airport where I don't have local knowledge. I'm eight miles northwest or something like that. But since everybody knows Lily Chapel, it'll just be both tower experiment 284, well done, Lily Chapel inbound landing or inbound for touch and goes or inbound for low approach or inbound for IFR practice. Let him know ahead of time what you're going to want to do. When I say landing, he knows I'm a full stop. So he's going to work me in with any touch and goes or whatever. It just helps him to know what you want to do as early as possible. And I try to help them. They're there to help us. Sure. It, it should not be. There was a controller that it was not a good relationship. He had a lot of animosity or just was a mean guy. The controllers we have now, I've never had a problem with any of them. Uh, all final for 5-9 X-ray. the X-ray. No, we were 53 X-ray, Roger, runway 4, clear to land. Okay, still well, landing 4, no reason that would have changed. Let's take us back over here. I want to go to this this guy right here. And all you got to do is put that line on it. That line is where we're going. And that was, that's actually 10 miles. That's a mile per hash mark. Uh, right now it's uh, 8 miles. Oh, that's right, it is 10 miles. It's almost 10 miles. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, I got a 10 mile forecast. So I've got to go to the right. Yeah, from we're going to line it there. up nope, to this one where it says Lily, that little silver flag. You may not be able to see that with the glass. It's kind of sure. It's kind of tough. Right where my finger is, right here. Right here is where I want to be. There we go. So if that line is intersecting this where it says Lily, that we're going to get there. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. We're still climbing. Don't worry too much about that. That all comes later. This is just kind of getting the fire hose out of the way. <laughs> And it's easier from over here. You're looking at it from the side, so it's not going to be as bright for you. There's not much parallax like you would with actual needles, but it is easier from over here. And Lily Chapel is nice because I don't have to say I'm six miles or whatever. I can just say I'm Lily Chapel inbound. He knows exactly where I am. not a bad day at all. Got a nice breeze too. It can get very hot in this airplane. A little bit. It can get very bumpy. I try to fly in the mornings, especially in the summer or evenings, morning or evenings, middle of the day in the summer. If you can see those cumulus clouds, that's a lot of air going up. There's also air coming down. Where you go from air up to air down is when you hit that speed bump and they can be very sharp. It's a light airplane. It doesn't mush through them. It just bam, bam, bam. You can see the green elevator. Yes. There's a group, one green field that's just a little beyond that, and that's where we'll make our call. So I head over that direction. You can, yeah. That's where we're. I, we'll get there one way or the other. There's a bicycle path that goes by. Yes, there is. It goes all the way to Cincinnati. That's Lake Madison. The way I remember that's Lake Madison, not Madison Lake, because I just imagine it as a stripper name. <laughs> 
Actually, that could still go either way, couldn't it? It might be Madison Lake now, I think, on it. Now, we got traffic coming over here. It's 400 feet below us. Not sure where he's headed. Could be going to Lily to come back in. He just dropped off again. There he is, 500 below us. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. He's five miles. It's going to be very hard to see because he's below us. So we'll get into the ground clutter. We're not going to descend knowing he's there. We'll watch to make sure he doesn't ascend. If we have to, we'll just duck behind him or whatever, whatever. As soon as we can see him, it's no issue at all. If he stays below us, it's no issue at all. We're pretty high up. 60 Fox, roger. Sir, 53 X-ray text via Alpha to Bravo. So he's still 500 below. He's at 3,000 feet. And he could do anything from there, so we'll see. Uh, still four and a half miles. I still have not much hope of seeing him. I wish I was better at finding him. Now he's 300 feet. We're going to really start, we're seriously going to start looking for this guy. We'll keep our altitude. He's just up and down a little bit. We're still fine. Nice 500 below again, okay. Uh, three miles, I ought to be able to see him. My eyes, I, I don't have good eyes. He's almost turned parallel to us now. I wonder if he's over 70, that might be the cops. He may just be circling around the highway. He's turning away from us, so he's not a, no longer a factor. All right, so where are we with regard to Lily Chapel? I wasn't paying attention. There it is right there. Okay. That's getting pretty close. He's going to cross in front of us again. We're just going to have to keep an eye on this guy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let the tower know we're coming in because they need to know that. Full tower, experimental 284 Delta Golf over Lily Chapel inbound landing. Experimental 284 Delta Golf, Bolton Tower, Roger, report to left base, runway two, uh, runway four, wind 1005, altimeter 3006. Report left base, runway four, four Delta Golf. We're actually high right now. If we were trying to hit the numbers, I'd have to slip it in. But I'm not trying to hit the numbers. You see the bars? Yes. There's three sets of bars. That third set is where I want to touch down, or in that neighborhood. Sometimes I, I actually aim for the big solid ones because they're easier to see. Uh -huh. But either way, I pick some place I want the airplane to land. I land the airplane where I want to land the airplane. I just let, you know, I'm just playing Yahtzee here. Uh, right now, it looks like if I left it like this, we would be short of the runway. There, we might make the numbers. You can tell, now see, when we level out, that'll change. See how the four is kind of coming towards us relative to the cow? Yes. That means we're going to be above over it. If anything is moving away, you're not going to make it. So what I want is this four, the two and the two. I want those bars to not move further or closer to me, and it's kind of hard to, it's actually kind of hard to do. Right now, it looks just right. And I can, you know, I can fix it. Now I'm doing 65 knots. You can do it at 60. I prefer 65 just because. Short runway, I would have it right on 60. Now there's a big sinkhole there. Now we got a crosswind. See how I'm having to crab into that crosswind? Yep. That makes everything harder. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're floating. We're floating. We're floating. Ah, oh, darn it. Missed my target. Doesn't matter, but... I'd like to hit my target. Now he's going to tell me left out the three. Towers. On the ground. Uh, six one two kilo alpha with you for a right base entry for runway four. Zero six one two kilo alpha continue. Roger that continue in for six one two kilo alpha. Fair five three X ray text via alpha to Charlie Monte ground point eight. Was that for four delta golf? I'm sorry, four delta golf. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, alpha Bravo. Uh, I'm sorry, alpha Charlie Monte ground point eight. I think that's what six one two kilo alpha. Okay, good enough. Terry, four, you turn the final <laughs> runway four one zero nine zero four altimeter three zero zero six. Roger that roll for our. It's the same every time. Six one two kilo alpha. This taxiway used to extend all the way out to the runway, and the FAA when they redid the runway said that's stupid. Um, you're taxiing down here, you miss this taxiway, you're right out on the runway. I agree with them a hundred percent, but it was convenient. <laughs> it was right where I needed to be coming from the other direction. But it, it, they were right. It didn't make any sense to have a taxiway going directly into an active runway. Well, it's busy here today. You hardly ever see. There must be something going on at the barbecue place. Hardly ever see. Well, it is a Saturday. 
I say it all Saturday to me, so I tend to forget. <laughs> all right, so that's a Bonanza V-tail. That's a Cessna 172, I suspect. Yeah. Could be, uh, if it's got call flaps, it's 182. I think that might be 182. That's an Aztec. That's a, uh, oh, I don't know what that is. It looks like a 210. That's a jet, but Terrible. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a 172. That's a 152. That's a Archer or a Cherokee. Uh, I think the 152, the weight requirement. Yeah, they're, it's it's not currently LSA. So we're gonna, they're going to change that, or it, it will be. You could get one of those as an LSA, or, or what did they end up calling it? And I, I think it was, I think it, what happened was, um, when they were developing the LSA rules, they took a lot of things from Europe, who also, who had a lot of very small light airplanes, because for them it was fuel efficiency and cost. Um, and I think a lot of that stuff just, eh, that's working for them, so that's a good enough number. I can't see why they would deliberately exclude the 152. I just can't see it, but it's the FAA. <laughs> you don't know. It's a, it's a bureau bureaucracy in every sense of the word. Oh, I should let you practice taxi. I oh, will do that yeah, next time. Okay. We'll do that next time. Acquired skill. That's Mike's thing. Mike is uh this one. Oh, this one. Okay. Oh no, that's. It might be uh wherever the yellow plane is. Yeah, I think he's this one. Yeah, because he's got the decal on the door of his P40. <laughs> he must be out flying for a living today. I texted him, didn't get an answer, and that usually means he's out flying for United.